Welcome back everyone, Jake here. Currently we're on day 78 of Russia's disastrous invasion of Ukraine, and it's estimated that over 26,000 Russian soldiers have been killed so far. How many exactly? Potentially, we'll never know. And the reason we'll never know is because Russia lies. Russia lies about absolutely everything, and they have no regard for their own forces. Here's an article from Newsweek. Russia is counting killed soldiers as missing in order to hide their true losses. So the Russian military is allegedly counting killed soldiers in Ukraine as missing to hide the true number of combat losses. The Security Service of Ukraine said it has intercepted phone calls between Russian soldiers who admitted to covering up losses and hiding dead bodies in massive dumps across the country. Russia has suffered significant military losses since the war began in February, including the deaths of at least 12 top generals. So, of course, Ukraine and Western intelligence is intercepting all of these phone calls between Russian soldiers and their mothers, their wives, their girlfriends, because none of them are encrypted. So here is the phone conversation put out by SBU. We'll just watch a couple seconds of this together. They were expecting an easy walk. I'll link this down below if you want to see it for yourself, but this is a Russian soldier admitting to dumping the bodies of Russian soldiers in dumps so that their commander can report those soldiers just as missing, not killed in action. As a veteran myself, I struggle to comprehend how you can continue fighting for a force, fighting for a government that has no regard for their own soldiers in such a way, where if something were to happen to you, more than likely your body would just get dumped and then your loved ones would never know exactly what happened to you. When we check out the war map put out by the BBC, Russia is still failing to make significant gains to get control of the Donbass region, and Ukraine is actually making steady progress around Kharkiv, and there are reports that the forces in Kharkiv have pushed uh, Russian forces all the way back to the border. Here's a, a report put out by the BBC, and let's just watch about one minute of this clip of a BBC reporter embedded with Ukrainian forces outside of Kharkiv. Move fast. An army in retreat is just as dangerous. So they're on guard. Above them they know that enemy drones are watching. These men are exposed. At the top of this ridge, Russian tanks and artillery still roam and still lay down fire. This has become a far more mobile fight. A deadly game of hide and seek in the Kharkiv countryside. Okay, I will go. Okay. You will go there. Yep. Behind the fence, yeah? Okay? We're following a Ukrainian territorial defense unit, all volunteers. Every second out in the open risks targeting from Russians who are less than half a kilometer away. The men you see are from Kharkiv. They're fighting for Ukraine, but they're also fighting for their city. And it's a close quarters battle. But every inch of ground they gain here, every other mile, gives their city respite from the Russian guns that you can hear. Okay, so no, okay. We're now in the third month of this war. Who's winning? We're winning. Of course, Ukraine is winning. 
So the BBC reporter asked the Ukrainian soldier, who do you think is winning this war? And of course, uh, Ukrainian morale is high. These territorial defense forces, they're all volunteers. So in a fight, who would you rather pick to win? People defending their homes, defending their families, defending their city, or conscripts being forced to fight for Vladimir Putin? So the forces outside of Kharkiv on the Russian side are performing terribly. Many of them are just abandoning, abandoning their vehicles, abandoning their posts, and currently trying to retreat to Russia. And here's a post on the Russian border of a, uh, let's see, it's a Luhansk People's Republic soldier. So this is the 206th Regiment of the Armed Forces of Luhansk People's Republic. They abandoned their position outside of Kharkiv, and they're trying to retreat back into Russian territory. However, they're at the border crossing, and the border guards won't let them retreat back into Russia. Let me just show you a little bit of this clip of these Luhansk fighters, uh, basically disgruntled and upset that Russia won't let them back in. Люди уже вторые сутки на границе, их не выпускают, никаких комментариев не дают. Что делать мы не знаем, так как нас не выпускают, грозятся тюрьмой, расстрелом и так далее. So they're just loitering, sitting around. They can't get clarification about what they're supposed to do. But I'm sure Russia is pretty upset that these Luhansk fighters completely retreated and gave up their positions. If you've never seen the World War II movie, uh, Enemy at the Gates, it's basically that scenario where hold your ground and die by the enemy, or if you retreat, we'll just shoot you ourselves. Russia is absolutely merciless. And I really enjoy seeing reports such as this one, debacle on the Donets, how Russian forces got obliterated trying to cross a river. Russia wants to encircle Ukrainian troops on a key part of the battlefield, but they can't cross a river in order to do so without getting killed by the Ukrainians. And these pictures are absolutely wild. Where did this battle occur? This is in the Luhansk region. Uh, this is the Donbass. Russia really wants control of it. And Russia needs to get across this uh, river, Seversky. And they've attempted a couple times now, and Ukraine <laughs> keeps destroying their pontoon bridges as they attempt to cross. So this is what it looks like when Russia successfully can cross one of these rivers on a pontoon bridge. So potentially Russia can build one of these bridges and then get a battalion tactical group across in a single day. But of course, with satellites and drones, Ukraine is monitoring all of these groups, monitoring all of these rivers. So Russia keeps attempting to construct one of these bridges and then get one of their BTGs across. So what Ukraine does is they just wait for the pontoon bridge to be completed and then wait for the first uh, vehicle to cross and then they start unloading artillery on it. So this is one battle that occurred in one day where Ukrainian artillery allegedly took out 73 Russian vehicles. You can go ahead and count up how many potentially dead Russian soldiers that is, uh, you know, if it's two or three occupants per vehicle. But these pictures are insane. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all bunched up on the river where the pontoon bridge were, was destroyed. Additionally, there was a column of these trucks on this single narrow road lined up to cross the bridge. We've got another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three. So as soon as all of these Russian forces were bunched up, lined up, trying to get across this pontoon bridge, uh, Ukrainian artillery just shelled them all day until basically there was nothing left. 
And if you've not seen this video that's gone viral, this was captured by a Chinese reporter on their dash cam, but it shows the point in which a Russian tank is hit, and there's something now being called the jack-in-a-box effect. There's a design flaw with these Russian tanks because all of their munitions are, are held within the compartments with the Russian soldiers. So as soon as the tank is hit by a significant round, all the munitions inside explode and the turret pops off. If you've not seen this clip, let's just watch 10 seconds of this. So a tank is hit and that thing blowing into the air is the turret of the tank. Wow. And you can see that it's happened in these photos as well. The, the turret on this tank is completely gone. It's laying in the mud over here. So anytime an artillery shell hits one of these tanks, all the munitions inside explodes. Wow. So the question is, uh, is where is the Russian Air Force? Here's a tweet from a parody account that I like called Darth Putin. It's on Twitter, at Darth Putin KGB. And weeks into the war, 11, victory so far, zero, sanctions imposed on Russia, infinity, economy down the toilets, generals all being killed, army advancing backwards, navy sinking and burning, air force completely absent, Finland now joining NATO. <laughs> I remain a master strategist. And this is wild, this is from uh, Business Insider, but downed Russian fighters are being found with basic GPS equipment taped to the, da taped to the dashboards. This is a according to the UK defense minister. This is, this is crazy. Wrecked Russian fighter jets are being found with rudimentary GPS receivers taped to the dashboards in Ukraine because their inbuilt navigation systems are so bad. So where is the Russian Air Force? How is it possible that uh, Ukrainian artillery can take out this BTG trying to cross a river and there's absolutely no air support in response? The fact that they the Russian military would even attempt this without air support to potentially take out artillery firing on them should they become bogged down, it's absolutely mind-blowing. Meanwhile, the Ukrainians' capabilities with every growing day increase. The, uh, we're now getting the first social media posts from Ukrainian fighters uh, talking about these American howitzers that have been promised, delivered, and are now on the front lines uh, firing on Russian positions. Let's just watch a little bit of this. So this Ukrainian fighter looks pretty excited to uh, start unloading shells from this American howitzer. If you want to see what this looks like, this is a Ukrainian team. I think it takes about eight people to operate one howitzer. But what they do is they just have to get within basically 12 miles of a Russian position where Russian forces are bunched together. They'll set up a couple of these howitzers and then just spend all day firing on them, uh, shell after shell. And these things are pretty accurate. Let's watch a single round being loaded and fired off by Ukrainian forces. Now, if Russia had a competent air force, these howitzers, once they start fighting, firing, would be very vulnerable. But thankfully for the Ukrainians, Russia does not have a competent uh, air force. I now want to tell you guys about just uh, the sheer depravity of the Russian forces in their uh, attacks on civilians and their looting of Ukrainian private property. Here is a clip of uh, uh, an entrenched position that Russians abandoned 
and Ukrainians are taking video of it, and look what they found in this Russian trench. So this is in the middle of a field, out in the middle of nowhere. How did this washing machine get into this Russian fortified position? And obviously what they did is in a city somewhere, some Russian soldier saw this in a Ukrainian home and said, this would be good war booty, I guess, to bring back to mom or the wife or the girlfriend. So they dragged it out to this trench and eventually they either were killed or they had to abandon the trench and they just left the washing machine there. Absolutely unbelievable. Here's a picture of a helicopter that was shot down by Ukrainian forces and they noticed in the wreckage of the helicopter there's a dryer. So what this means is that Russian forces during a war in a war zone using Russian military equipment are trying to steal washers and dryers. That's what they are <laughs> with a war going on and they're losing tens of thousands of soldiers. This is their priority. This is you know, I'm, I'm speechless that, you know, potentially their lives are at risk and they want to prioritize stealing a dryer from Ukrainians. Here's a video that's recently gone public. Uh, I'm not going to play it for you because then YouTube will age restrict my video. Uh, you can watch it if you want. But what happened in this video is that Russian forces outside of Kyiv, this is before they abandoned the north, were, were walked up to this car dealership and uh, two people that worked at this car dealership, <clears throat> one of them was a unarmed security guard who's like 60 years old. Uh, the Russians wanted to talk to them. They came up to them. They actually shared a cigarette. They were talking and, you know, nothing, nothing unusual was happening at first. Then these two uh, turned around and started walking away. It looked like the Russian forces were walking away. The Russians turned around and then shot them in the back and killed them. All of this was captured on CCTV. You can watch the video if you want to see it. The Russians then broke into this car dealership and just started drinking all the alcohol, eating all the food, stealing whatever they could steal. And the entire time, everything they did was caught on video, and ultimately that's what this is about. This entire invasion is about raping and pillaging and looting. This is not a professional military. These are not professionally trained soldiers. They're just marauders, and it's all... The entire country is just a smash and grab. Uh, so this is also news. First Russian soldier suspected of murdering a civilian in Ukraine is going to face trial. Ukrainian authorities are moving ahead with the first murder trial of a Russian soldier suspected of killing a Ukrainian civilian during Russia's unprovoked in, uh, invasion. According to uh, Venediktova, the 20-year-old Russian soldier who is currently in Ukrainian custody may face up to life in prison if convicted. And they should get these guys. They should get every single one of them for war crimes, for murder, for looting. Russian society is pretty messed up. So here is uh, children being dressed up on May 9th. This was their Victory Day celebration. Let me just show you a little bit of this clip. So while their Russian soldiers are killing civilians, stealing their washers and dryers, as their own soldiers fall, their bodies are being dumped, uh, and then they're being reported missing. Meanwhile, what are civilians back home doing during this conflict? They're dressing their children up in these uniforms with this stupid Z on cardboard tanks. Uh, Russia's a pretty messed up place. Here's a picture that went viral on Reddit of the 
of Russian Orthodox priests sprinkling holy water on a nuclear missile named Satan. This is their SS-18. Just, just think about that. Clergymen, uh, members of the Russian Orthodox Church, are blessing a bomb that they've named Satan. Honestly, I think the entire Russian society, Russian sta state, uh, needs a hard re reboot after this, because uh, they got some serious soul-searching to do. I don't want to end this video on a down note, uh, so let's cover a story I haven't mentioned yet about a bomb-sniffing dog in Ukraine named Patron. He's a Jack Russell Terrier, and he's been helping out uh, clear out uh, landmines and explosives left by Russian forces. The hero dog on duty in Ukraine. Tonight in Ukraine, a two-year-old Jack Russell named Patron helping the Ukrainians clear bombs, starting his day, his protective vest on. A bomb disposal worker putting the vest on too, opening the door. At Jack Russell, hopping in. They are in Chernihiv, clearing the city of explosives, searching for dangerous debris left behind by the Russians, sniffing in the field, digging in the dirt. Tonight, that Jack Russell is credited with helping to find nearly 90 explosive devices, the team then clearing the landmines and shells. Patron the dog, now being celebrated as one of the many heroes in this war. Ukrainians have been sharing drawings of him, and kind words, too saying it motivates us not to give up, no matter how hard it is, to keep the bar high and to fight with new strength, knowing how many people are still waiting for help and how many people believe in us. We love this story, that dog giving Ukrainians hope tonight. So this dog, Patron, has been clearing out landmines left by Russians as they fled the north. Russians deliberately have been leaving landmines in playgrounds where children would go, in uh, churchyards where parishioners would try and worship. If you want to follow Patron the dog on social media, he's got 254,000 followers on Instagram, and he's got some pretty adorable posts. Uh, definitely worth checking out. Okay, that's all for this update video. If you found it informative, consider giving it a thumbs up. Really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. If you have any comments or questions, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, take care, be safe.